Got clients with wobbly ankles? Hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar coming to you from Northern Wisconsin where I'm doing some dog sitting and some writing in between the chasing after dogs. <laughs> Today we're talking about ankle, the wobbly ankle. Many of our older clients, many of our younger clients as well, have that wobbly ankle sensation. And a lot of, a lot of them say things or they've been told that, hey, you know what? I've been told I have weak ankles. Well, not many people have weak ankles. What they have actually is a strategy that's not really serving them as well as it could. In other words, they don't have great alignment and control of their ankle and foot complex. Now, there's lots of things that can be driving ankle and foot complex issues, the loss of alignment and control. Let's focus today just on a few of the muscles of the ankle and foot, understanding, of course, that you can't isolate any muscles and there's never a simple cause to that wobbly ankle position. So thank you for joining me today in this edition of Facebook Live. I apologize, like I said, for the sound and the visual here. We'll, we'll, we, I'll, re, I'll reshoot this video in case it doesn't come out well. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being part of our community. Now, if we think about the ankle and foot, got my trusty model here. So this is a right ankle and foot. There's a bunch of small, little, tiny muscles. Obviously, there's big muscles that come down into the ankle and foot. There's a bunch of small, tiny, little muscles in between these bones, these long bones of the foot. These long bones here are the metatarsals. So you have your five metatarsals that go into the five toes or phalanxes, and they help the, these tiny muscles that are in between the toes. There's two sets of them. One set is called the dorsal interossei, and one is called the plantar interossei. Hello, Sue Gleason, one of our fellow integrative movement specialists. Good to see you this afternoon. So the dorsal interossei are more on the top of the foot, the dorsal surface of the foot. The plantar interossei are more on the plantar surface or bottom of the foot. Well, these muscles attach from these metatarsals down to the phalanxes. And essentially what they do, they have multiple functions, but what they really do is we think about the knuckles of your toes. The knuckles of your toes or the knuckles of your hand, that's a metatars metacarpal on your hand. It's the metacarpals, the, the metacarpals, metatarsals of your foot. The metacarpals of your hand attach to the phalanxes of your fingers. So the knuckles are the metacarpophalangeal joints of your knuckles. The metatarsophalangeal joint are the knuckles, so to speak, of your foot. When we load the foot, so when we go from, from double leg support to single leg support, and our body weight's moving over top of the foot, we need this metatarsophalangeal joint to be stable and controlled so that the foot can, number one, we need the foot to, to be able to adapt to the ground. Number two, we need the foot to be able to be stable as the body weight is coming over it. And we need the foot to sort of convert into a rigid lever so that we can then propel off a more rigid type foot and stable ankle position. Well, these intrinsic muscles, their job is primarily to control that metatarsophalangeal articulation or joint underneath those knuckles. So the toes stay long, the midfoot stays nice and stable as the body weight comes up and over top the toes and we can propel ourselves effectively forward. Now, the challenge for these muscles are when our clients are in shoes too long, when they've had multiple injuries to their ankle or foot, like in, especially those inversion ankle sprains, and they have overactivity of some of those muscles, like those long toe flexors, that's why their toes will oftentimes be curled, it's hard to, it's challenging for them to activate and use those intrinsic muscles. And they're hard to train because it's, there's no specific exercise per se to train. You know, you do bicep curls to train your biceps. There's not a bicep curl for your intrinsic muscles. However, we can prioritize their use. We can really emphasize their use by doing barefoot training and doing a little bit of activation. I'm going to show you a three-step process in how to get those foot muscles more active. So, sit in my little chair here. So what we're going to do, let me slide back here a little bit. So what we're going to do is I'm going to bring my fingers. It's hard to get a tool in between your toes. If you, if you have a good tool to use, use that tool. Save your fingers to wear and tear. But if you don't have a tool handy, you can use your fingers. And I'm basically using a pincer grasp like that to go in between the metatarsals. So I'm going to grab my big toe here. Hopefully you can kind of see this. 
And what I'm doing is sort of pinching in between the metatarsals. Remember, there's five metatarsals. So what I'm doing essentially is I'm pinching in between and just sort of stimulating the receptors, the skin, the fat tissue, the, the muscles and the fascia, the, the ligaments all have receptors on them that send signals back to the central nervous system. So I'm stimulating all those receptors in this area in between the metatarsals. I'm gonna go pretty quickly through this so you can see it. So let me back up here, there we go. So if you get in between the metatarsals and then just sort of go up and down and sort of just stimulate those receptors. And if you're watching this video, you can do this along with me or, or if you're watching it in recording, just stop the recording and just try this out. Check your balance before and then we'll recheck our balance afterwards. Okay, so go in between each of the five metatarsals and give it a good grasp. It's going to be a little bit tender because, you know, you've never really massaged that area or most people haven't massaged that area. And it's going to be quite tender because there's muscles that aren't working as well as they could. There's muscles that are underactive and or overactive. And there's not a lot of tissue, so to speak, around that area. Okay, so we're going to go through I'm in between the... the fourth and fifth toe, I should say the third and fourth toe, and then finally I'll go in between the third and fifth metatarsal or that outside portion of the foot. So we're getting in between the metatarsals, we're kind of going up and down like that, sort of squeezing, and then going sort of like cross friction, a long cross, not really cross friction this way, across it, it's sort of an up and down, an up and down sort of cross friction, it's not really cross, so it's, it gives us a longitudinal friction up and down in between these metatarsals to stimulate those receptors. Now, that's part one. Stimulate, wake up those receptors in those muscles, fascia, and connective tissue. Now, number two, you just need a box or something, or a yoga block will work. I'm gonna grab this little container here. And you wanna put your foot over top, maybe slide back a little bit. Slide my little chair back. Put your foot over top that box. Put it right at the edge, right at the edge of you, you, where your knuckles meet so that metatarsal meets the phalanx, put those joints right at the edge of the box. Because what we want to do is not go like this. We don't want to claw the box. We want to go more like this. We want to flex at the metacarp metatarsal phalangeal articulation. So I want to put the joint right at the edge of the block or box or yoga block and then Flex the toes at that joint. Just like you, you flex your hand like this, or you flex your fingers like this. We, want, we don't want this with the toes. We don't want toe curling. We want short toe flexion. These are the muscles. This is a function, I should say, of the interossei muscles. So you want to get those toes to go down long. I struggle a, a little bit with this exercise, so this is a good exercise for me to be doing. So Hold it down there for about a count of five seconds. You can hold it longer, but for a lot of clients, five seconds is quite hard. You want to keep the weight equal between the big toe and small toe side of the foot. We turn to the side here so you can see it from the side. So align those joints up right at the edge of the block and just do a small, that small short toe flexion. Again, toes should go long. Don't worry about how far down they go. Just activate those short toe flexors, those interossei muscles. Obviously, you're getting other short toe flexors as well, but all the short toe flexors are intrinsic muscles of the foot. So we're training that whole complex together. Okay? So we'll do about five sets of five second holds, maybe two rounds of that, or five reps of five second holds. Now, we want to train the foot in a more optimal position. So my head will be cut off here, but so, so you can see my foot. So now what I want to do is start with my feet parallel to each other. I'm going to focus again on, on this left side. Get my feet parallel. I'm going to do a hip hinge. So really get my weight over top the foot tripod. I'm going to slide this right foot back out of the way. And what I'm going to do is a small hip hinge and really focus on the toes being long, the weight being equal side to side. I want to make sure that my ankle is not moving a lot through that transverse, or, the, or should say the frontal plane. So from the front, start with your hip hinge, right foot goes back, control the foot tripod, 
So like, again, your foot should, and ankle shouldn't be go, going like this. Make sure your client has a stable support. They can always hang on for support. You want to make sure that they can control the eccentric phase. This is super important. Control the eccentric phase, load that foot. The toe should go slightly longer. The foot should get slightly wider as you're loading, and then come up. Make sure the toes stay long. Make sure you stay supported over top the foot tripod. Toes long, foot spread out on the foot tripod. Big toe, small toe, heel. Do a few reps like that. As I said, you can always have your client support on a banister in this case. So that way they're maintaining alignment and control. The pelvis and hips, the pelvis and hips should be aligned as you check it out. Now, go back and recheck. Check your balance at the end, and your foot should be way stable and feel really well controlled upon that foot tripod. So again, there should be a little bit of ankle sway, but his ankle shouldn't be going like this. And that's how you can tell when you've gotten some good activation of these, those foot intrinsics. You've got a more stable base, and now the nervous system can align above that. The hip, the knee, the ankle and foot, and that thoracopelvic cylinder above that foot tripod, and now you've given your client a great strategy for improved balance and alignment. So, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it made sense. Activating those intrinsic muscles. First, you do your myofascial release or that cross friction. It's more of a longitudinal friction of those intrinsic muscles to wake up those, those mechanoreceptors that are in the skin, the fat tissue, the fascia, the muscles and ligaments of the foot. Then you do an isometric, sort of isometric contraction to activate those short toe flexors. And then you integrate it into a pattern so the brain and central nervous system can find and use the, why the tiny chair? <laughs> Otherwise I'd be kneeling on the floor so, that, so the tiny chair just allows me to uh, be down here low. <laughs> it's a very special chair, it helps me activate the intrinsic muscles. <laughs> so. I hope that helped. And so, number one, activate the stimulate those receptors. Number two, activate those short toe flexors. Number three, integrate it into an upright position. And then notice the difference in your foot control as well as your brain's awareness because we're also waking up that proprioceptive sense, your brain's awareness of where that foot is in space. And now that foot can respond and give more appropriate and optimal proprioceptive signals back to the central nervous system. So this is Dr. Evan Osar of the Two Anatomy Geeks. This week is part two of our three-part series on the anatomy of walking. In this series, Jill and I are walking you through the anatomy associated with faster walking. Faster walking is one of those sort of not often discussed sort of those underlying factors of why or how you create longevity in your clients. It's not how much your clients walk, it's how fast they walk. Now, obviously, if they walk more and walk faster, they're going to have better chances of longevity and sustainability. There's lots of research, not lots of research, there's some research to suggest that faster walking speed is linked to, to the decrease in all-cause mortality. So our goal, our responsibility for our clients is help them walk faster. Understanding the anatomy of walking, using the foot muscles better, the foot anatomy better, will help your clients walk faster. Last week, we talked about the glutes and how to, how to train the pelvis for increased pelvic stability in walking. This week, we're discussing the foot and ankle and those intrinsic foot muscles. I'll give you a little preview here. Next week, we go into the third part of the series where we talk about rotation. So the link is in the bio here. We'd love to have you join us. It's a great way, it's a great community. It's a great way to learn the anatomy and more importantly, apply the anatomy to your clients. So you help them create a better strategy, actually improve function, maybe decrease some of their discomfort, their foot discomfort, if they have foot dis discomfort, that's not the goal, but it will help a lot of clients with their, with their foot function, and then more importantly, help them walk faster so you give them that quality of life back and sustainability, and many clients will maintain their independence by walking faster. Link is in the bio, we'd love to see you. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in this video. Hopefully the sound is okay, and if not, I will re-record this video with my mic when I get back to home, when I, when I get back to home, when I get, when I get home. Have a great Tuesday, have a great week. Get out there, educate, empower, be that light for your clients. Thanks for, so much for being part of our community and allowing us to be a part of 
your education and carry this information into your clients. Make a great day. This is Dr. Evan Osar with Discover IMI and the Integrative Movement Insider. Take care. Bye-bye.